Lesson 4.2 Feature Writing Brainstorming Your Ideas Good old brainstorming. You've been hearing about the concept of brainstorming since early elementary school. You've been given worksheets to help you brainstorm in any manner of different methods or graphs and you've likely seen it as a required step for just about every piece of writing of any substance you ever did in an English class. So it may have lost its meaning for you, or you may roll your eyes when you hear the word. When we say brainstorming, what we really mean is taking actual time, minutes and seconds, to just think without distraction. And as you think, you write down the thoughts as they come without judging them. It's about being okay with ideas that aren't that great and not quitting. When we brainstorm, we recognize that sometimes we have to go through a lot of mediocre ideas floating around in our brain before we can find those deeper ideas that make for great stories. Often the way it works is just okay ideas get written down and then lead to better ideas and then a better idea. Basically, if you don't take the actual minutes and seconds to think without distraction, you haven't brainstormed. This is when students say things to me like, I can't think of an idea. Of course you can't think of an idea if you haven't really put yourself in a position to actually try to. The fact of the matter is, it's impossible to say there are no ideas for a story. Because we know everybody has a story. There's stories going on all around us if we'll look, think, and ask questions. The only reason a student journalist wouldn't be able to come up with a story idea is because they haven't really tried to look around, think, and ask questions. Writing guru Bobby Hawthorne puts it this way in his book Radical Write. Is it possible to cram hundreds, sometimes thousands of teenagers into an industrial structure eight hours a day, five days a week, some weekends, and not have something to write about? Teenagers today may not know as much as adults would like them to, but they sure feel. They are hopeful, afraid, in need of love and attention, occasionally desperate. Many are lost and scared, even if they try so hard to appear grown up. For the first time in our nation's history, students cannot expect to achieve a higher standard of living than their parents. They face environmental chaos, climate change, empty homes, global pandemics, racism and intolerance, soaring divorce rates, a staggering national debt, toxic political stagnation, a widening gap between the have and the have-nots, and the specter of international terrorism. Given all this, how can any publication staff suggest it has nothing better to write about than who won Homecoming Queen, what the prom theme was, and when graduation is scheduled? So, if you find yourself at the beginning of this process and you need to find an idea for a story, first take a minute to actually really brainstorm. Put your phone away, sit somewhere you can concentrate, and begin by asking yourselves, what do my peers really care about? Or what should they care about? Or where is there something going on that's deeper than what it seems? Then just start listing. Give your brain a chance to fire its synapses. Let it access your long-term memory and make connections. Give your brain actual space to do its work and let it find those observations or thoughts you filed away deep in there. Other ways to generate ideas might mean going to lunch in the cafeteria and taking notes on the conversation topics you hear and then looking back at them and asking yourself, what's really going on here under the surface? How could this be a feature story about the deeper things going on? Hawthorne suggests trying this as well. He suggests watching and listening. What serious issues are people talking about? What are teachers and administrators dealing with on a regular basis? What is local media covering? Are there ways to localize stories going on in the city or nation with connections to people on campus? He suggests looking for stories in the not-so-obvious places. 
science fairs, academic competitions, vocational classes like auto repair, in the ALE classes, and things like that. Try looking at places and people on campus that others wouldn't necessarily think to. Observation during your day and jotting some notes down about what you observe in your phone or in your reporter's notebook, when you actually try it, almost always generates new, unique, engaging ideas for stories. Don't depend on writing about the first one or two ideas that pop in your head. Give yourself a chance to think and observe. Make time for it and commit to it, and you'll be off to the right start on a great feature story.